You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. 
Sometimes writers feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Take it's Friday, Friday, Friday. Oh, let me tell you something. I am so sick of Washington and all its works, all them politicians down there and them congressmen. Congress. I'll bet you won't find none of them congressmen signing down their electric blankets tonight. Which if they did, their secretaries would get up and go home. We gotta do something. Absolutely. You know what we gotta do? Foga party. Foga! 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 I want you to kill every golfer on the course. Check me if I'm wrong, Sandy, but if I kill all the golfers, they're going to lock me up and throw away the key. Guess what day it is. Guess what day it is. Huh? Friday! 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 All right, folks, happy Friday night. That's right, it's time for Robinson and Red. We are live right now on KLRNRadio.com. I'm one half of the crew, Mr. Rick Robinson. Welcome to your Friday night toga party, and toga, togas are optional. But please cover up, unless you're hot. Just saying. All right, so I'm one half of the crew, Mr. Rick Robinson. The other half is Mr. Dan Wright, and he's with us right now. Uh, luckily, miles away from me, because apparently he was munching on walking tacos before the show. I don't want to be anywhere near him right now. How are you, sir? <laughs> Um, fantastic. They were delicious. I'm sure they were, but I'm still glad we're not in the same booth. Just saying. <laughs> How are you doing? I am completely sleep deprived and um, have been working on projects all week and then did three hours of live radio yesterday and then all kinds of new announcements came out at the day job today, so we were slammed all day. And then I go out from work today and all of a sudden the fuel... Uh, regulator relay switch in my car decided it wanted to jiggle itself just loose enough where it wouldn't start. So apparently I have to kind of go out tomorrow and bend the clips on my fuel relay a bit so my car doesn't decide not to randomly not start just for the fun of it. Because now even my car is trying to troll me. What the hell world do I live in? <laughs> Grr. Sorry. But that's how yeah, I am. You, how are you? You were, you, were, you were radio marathon man last night. Yes, I was. For one night only, I was doing radio like the big dogs. I ran for three full hours. And actually, it wasn't nearly as weird as I thought it was going to be. Honestly, it felt like it went by in like 20 minutes. I was like, wait, we're done already? <laughs> I was like, what happened? How did I already do three hours of live radio? It feels like I've done less than an hour. But that's because I really, really like doing radio. And I think what made it interesting last night was I went from like three separate show formats. So I started the night in a really uncomfortable place for me because Jess always covers international news. I don't do international news. So I was like completely out of my depth. And then we rolled in with Jen and then I finished off the night, the night at home. And I'm like, okay, this doing three hours a day thing wouldn't be so bad. But then I got up this morning and I was like, holy crap, I'm so tired. So now, you know, I really, really want to do three hours a day. But not until I can do it full time and get paid for it. Because trying to work 40 hours a week plus two, three hours a day, I would probably kill somebody. I'm just saying, probably. Actually, I'm yeah, I mean, it, it as much as much as it's fun. I mean, it, it it mentally has to take something out of you. I mean, I did, you know, for a while there, I did my own show, and I mean, even for a while, I, I I was doing show with you and a show with the other guy, and but when I was doing my own show and I had to do my own prep for it and everything else and work, I mean. Those days were rough. I don't. I, I don't know how you do it because I, I would work all day and get home and try while I was at work here and there to scramble for what I wanted to talk about and then try to put a show together and it was rough. I mean, especially if I ended up working late. You know, I I was like, 
it was rough doing it. I enjoyed doing it, but those nights wore me out. I mean, I got off the air and I was done. Bad. See ya. Yeah, it's, uh, that'll pretty much be me tonight because I've. I, not only have I been doing like crazy stuff all week, like I was working on a video project for a client, I did some audio for a client, I worked on some other audio for another client on top of doing my day job, plus all the radio stuff. Now we have like a full weekend of stuff planned for the church and the early 4th of July celebration because I live in a small town. They're like, there's no way we're going to try to compete with everybody else's 4th of July stuff, so we're doing our stuff on Saturday. I'm like, great, so I have this thing tomorrow. For Fourth of July, and then I have a thing all day to Sunday at the church, and I'm just like, I just, I'm gonna need a day off from my days off by the time all this is done, and I'm just like, eh. But yeah. So anyway, um, enough of me whining. There's plenty more things to talk about other than me sounding like an old man who's complaining because I, I, I'm doing too much crap. So uh, where do you want to go first? Well, let's let's start with Peter Fonda. Do we have and to? and. Well, here, here's my problem with this, is the little tirade he went on, basic, basically wishing for a, a 12-year-old boy to get ripped from his mom and be put in a cage with pedophiles, and for the Department of Homeland Secretaries to Homeland Secretary to be put in a cage and basically raped in public and for Sarah Sanders children to be taken from her and go through this whole thing and not only have it all get a whole bunch of retweets and likes and everything but to have it just kind of blown off and he can just say, oh, I'm sorry, I regret what I said about the president's son. Well, you and know. everything's okay. And everything's okay. Sony Pictures is like, oh, it's terrible what he said, but everything's okay. But Roseanne says something and now she's I don't know if you saw it today. Yeah, she's been. They are doing a spinoff. They're doing a spinoff of the show without her in it. Yeah. The, so the, she's basically given up her rights to the show, and and done it all to keep the people involved with the show employed because she cares about them. And this guy can say stuff that literally has him being investigated by the Secret Service, and, ah, it's okay. It's okay. He apologized. It's okay. Yeah, I'm well, sick of this crap. I am sick of this crap. Well, to be fair, I, I, hang on. Well, to be fair, when Peter Fonda was shrieking at Ivanka, what he was really saying was this. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. Just saying. I mean, you know. But, you know, I, I just... Uh, it, <laughs> <sighs> It just what he said was disgusting. No, I mean, it really is. I mean, and, and again, the double standard is, is glaring and not surprising. And um, I really don't think this 10, uh, 10 episode spinoff that is tentatively being called The Connors is going to go anywhere. All because Roseanne was the driving force behind the show. Um, if they were going to do this, this is what they honestly should have done in the first place because. If, they, if this was – this because they, here's the thing with Roseanne. They knew what they were getting into when they brought her back. This isn't the first time that she's ever said anything incendiary on social media or anywhere else for that matter. I mean, for God's sake, she tanked the national anthem on purpose for attention. And you can't tell me that she didn't because there's no way anybody would sing that bad on pur without it being on purpose. I'm just saying. But as far as that goes, it's not like this is the first time that she's ever said anything crazy. So ABC knew what they were getting. If they were going to do this in the first place, they should have done it as the spinoff originally centered around Darlene. Because Darlene is about the uh, the, but the person that's playing Darlene is about the age that Roseanne's character was when the show launched in the first place. 
And then they still could have had Roseanne come on from time to time, and she could have been the crazy old lady that nobody liked, because that's the part that her mom played in the original show, and it probably would have worked. But now, because they've done all of this, the one thing is, first of all, I commend Roseanne, because you know she had to give up rights to it for this to happen. Second of all, this is also a really smart move for ABC, because if this works, even if it works for the short term, what they've done is they've blocked Fox from being able to pick up the Roseanne show, because they just signed the cast to a full season's worth of work. Because you know, at some point, that's, that was Fox's plan. They would have waited for the dust to settle, picked it up, and said, you know what, we'll, we'll see what happens with Last Man Standing, but if this does what I think it's going to do, then we'll probably pick up Roseanne next. And ABC says, like, ah, not now. Not now, motherfucker. We got it. We got him locked in, at least for one season. It's just, it's all dumb. It's all stupid. Twitter's become this this raving lunatic madhouse. I don't even enjoy spending any, I mean, as, as much as I try to promote stuff and talk to people, I really don't even enjoy spending time on Twitter anymore unless, unless I'm in one of the groups that we're in. Because I can't even say anything without getting inundated with this whole the party switched in 1842 BS, which is crap if you bother to do your research, by the way. It, it really is. Because if you really look... And everything the Democratic Party has done since its inception, they have never changed. What they've gotten good at is PR to convince people that, that they're out for the little guy when they're really not. And I'm just I'm tired of having to defend myself. I'm tired of listening. I'm tired of watching all of these people say whatever they want, whenever they want to. And all my friends are like, I can't even use my account because I said a made up word to somebody and I got suspended. Or I or, or your favorite word, which I've told you not to use, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> Although it really is a funny word. Although I shouldn't be encouraging you. See the conundrum you put me in? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... I mean, I, I'm I'm tired of the... And it, I, I don't know how it's ever going to change. I'm just tired of the hypocrisy. I'm tired of... I mean, I mean we, can, we, can, we can just segue right into this. This... This... I, I wasn't a fan for a while of the term fake news, but now it's just, it is fake news. Everything's fake news. You know, it's, it's what prompted this whole, this whole thing with Peter Fonda. It's fake news. I mean, they don't even use real situations and they turn them into real situations to try to get the, 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 the public to, to respond and and it's all about the media i mean obviously other than fox news i know who oh, fox news the trump shills blah 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 whatever it's it's the media doing anything they can to make trump look bad and the worst we, part about we it literally is have we we have the opposite we have the opposite of what propaganda was in Nazi Germany. The propaganda machine in Nazi Germany was pro-Hitler propaganda. We literally have a propaganda machine in this country that is anti the president. I don't know if there's any, ever been anything like it ever in the world, in any country. I don't think there has. Not to this extent. Not to the extent where they're bringing up pictures. I mean, the, 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 the thing that nobody realizes is if you have any inkling of what to do on a computer, you can actually find out exactly when an image was originally taken. Half of these pictures that have made the rounds on these latest kids in cages stories are from anywhere from 2011 to 2014. And nobody's talking about that because the metadata on the pictures tells you when they were taken if you know how to look for it. The, the kid that was the, the poster child for this thing, the little girl that was screaming and crying when she was supposedly ripped from her mother's arms by an ICE agent who became the poster child for this whole thing, the father of that child just put out a news story the other day that said, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I didn't support her decision to go and do what she did, but they're together right now. They were never separated. There was never a time that they were apart from each other. I have spoken to her. They are both fine. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. But it's all about we have to do everything we can to destroy Trump because we're losing on every front. The problem is, and again, remember, this was this was in a this was in an email from Hillary Clinton. If he wins, we are all going to hang. 
And if he wins, it will be your fault. That was an email that she put out to everybody on her team that said, if he wins, we are all going to hang. Why would she say that? Because we're seeing all of these things that are coming out through the IG report and all of these things that have come out through the Mueller investigation that they keep trying to spin back on Trump and it's not working because when you, when you follow it, when you actually trace it down, everything goes back to them. All of it goes back to them. It all started with the Democrats. They made up the story that they used to be able to spy on Trump, even though they were actually spying on Trump before that story before that story ever came into fruition. Because they had to be. Because they were trying to do everything they could to make sure that they had all the dirt they needed to be able to destroy him because I'm still I'm still convinced of this and nobody's been able to tell me otherwise. He was supposed to take a dive. And that's why that's why they keep talking about an insurance policy. When he got the nomination and everybody started freaking out when he was doing better and when the polls were saying one thing and everybody else was saying something else and all of these things started coming out, they're like, well, we have an insurance policy. It'll be all right. <laughs> Their insurance policy that they've been talking about for a long time was as far as they knew the fix was in. I am still convinced there has been a fix in the system in 2008 and 2012 because McCain li- lied down and so did Romney. Trump did not lie down. And he, I think he was supposed to, and I talked about this all week last week, so I'm not doing it again, but I, I'm still right back where I started from because we're dealing with this whole thing now where Trump started this whole concept of fake news, and even I was, even I was very condescending towards him about that when he first started badgering the press and talking about how terrible they was and how bad they were and how much they lie and how it's all fake news. The problem is whether it was prophetic or whether it was him driving them to drink, everything that he said has come to pass. It has. And yeah, I, <laughs> a friend of mine on Facebook posted something today. It said, Trump exposing the media ahead of schedule and under budget. <laughs> the worst part And he is. is true. He is. But, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, but, but what what kills it. me is the people that still reject that. I mean, how can you not see it? But that's just it. It's not just the media that he's exposing. By him deciding to go along with Sessions and do this hardline approach to immigration, he showed us how screwed up our immigration system has actually been since 1997. But nobody else was enforcing it. What he tried to do was point out, you know, this stuff that's been going on, that that is going on right now in front of you, this is what Barack Obama did behind closed doors. This is what George H.W. This is what George W. Bush did behind closed doors. This is what Bill Clinton did behind closed doors. This is what George H.W. Bush did behind closed doors. I'm letting you see what these guys have been doing without anybody talking about it for the last 20 years. And all I keep saying is Congress needs to be the people to fix this. Congress needs to be the people to fix this because an executive order isn't good enough to do it. He finally gave in and did an executive order, which is all great, fine, and good for the moment. But that just means that unless Congress actually does their damn job, that the next president can come in and say, you know, that executive order that Trump signed, I didn't really much care for that one. So we're going to make an executive order to undo that one. You know, kind of like all the undoing executive orders that Donald Trump has been doing. That's why executive orders are bad. Because if you rule by edict, since you're not a lifetime point, appointee, then the next person that gets to take your place gets to undo all your edicts. If Congress actually passes a law, the only way to fix that is to have Congress try to pass a new law. And if you can actually get Congress to pass a law nowadays, you ain't never getting that changed unless the, the Supreme Court throws it out. Because that's like a once-in-a-lifetime thing anymore. Unless it's got tons of pork in it or something for their constituents, they ain't passing shit. Just saying. No, they're not. And... <clears throat> what Trump did, like you and I have talked about it. Neither one of us likes the EOs. We hate them. I hate them. I think they're dumb. I, I don't think they should. I think they should just be done away with. But that was so smart the other day. I mean, it wasn't. Nothing was going to pass. Nothing will pass. It, it here it is. The Republicans can do something to give the Democrats exactly what they want or what they say they want, but the Democrats aren't going to sign off on it because it's midterms and they don't want the Republicans to get credit for it. And it works the other way around, too. It, it really, it, it's, 
it's broken. The whole system is broken. It is completely broken. That executive order was brilliant because it's Trump saying, all right, fine. I am going to take away exactly what you all are running on in the midterms. I'm just going to take it away. I'm going to take care of it. Then as soon as he does it, they're all like, oh, well, yeah, but that's not good enough. It, but now you got families in, you know, being held together. Whatever. Whatever. It's never going to be good enough. It's never going to be good enough for the Democrats until the borders are just open and everybody can just come in because they want the people that are coming in to come in and illegally vote for them. It all comes down to I don't give a shit about the people of this country as long as I can hang on to my job. That's what the majority, and I'm saying both sides, Democrats and Republicans, that's what the majority of them want, is I need to figure out how to keep my job. I really don't care about my constituents. I just want to keep my job. I want to keep my cushy job that has a pretty decent pay scale, but is getting me a whole lot of pork and retirement on the side. I want to keep my job. Yeah. And That's what it, it's what it's all about. It's what it's all about for both sides. I'm not going to just slam the Democrats. No, they, I mean, they, it really none is. of them will agree with each other on anything, even if they 100% agree with each other, because they don't want the other one to have credit for doing it. No, and that's exactly what it is. That is honestly one of the things that I think I'm most impressed with Trump. Like, like him, don't like him, whatever. He's actually doing what he said he was going to do when he got elected. He 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 talked about immigration the same way George H.W. Bush talked about immigration, the same way Bill Clinton talked about immigration, the same way that Bush 43 talked about immigration, the same way that in the beginning of his presidency, Barack Obama talked about immigration. He, they said all the same things that Donald Trump is saying right now. They said the same things about the embassy. They said the same things about fixing the economy. The only difference is, is Donald Trump is actually trying to do the things that he said that he was going to do. Has he had missteps? Sure. Is he doing things that I'm not so sure are going to work the way that he thinks they are? Probably. But at the same time, whether he means to or not, everything he touches works. So far, everything that everybody has, I mean, we, we were supposed to be dead 4 million times over, effective November 9th, 2017, or 2000, what, November 9th, 2016? We were supposed to be dead that morning. You know, as soon as, soon as we knew who the president was, that next morning, we were supposed to wake up glow, glowing in the dark. The world was over. We were going to wake up on fire. We were all going to die. The Democrats were all running around the street screaming, bring out your dead. Then net neutrality was supposed to kill us. That hasn't happened yet. The tax cuts were supposed to kill us. That hasn't happened yet. The Republicans are raiding Medicaid again, so grandma's going to die. That hasn't happened yet. All of these things that are supposed to kill us, that are supposed to be these great, big, terrible things, because, you know, he was going to piss off uh, the mental midget of the North, and suddenly we were all going to glow in the dark from North Korea. Uh, that hasn't happened I, I, I'm, just, I'm tired of all of it. It's all a bunch of hyperbole. It's all a bunch of people that don't really understand what's going on. And the thing that concerns me the most is I have, I have friends, real friends that I used to work with for years that are now coming at me about the kids in cages thing like it's the, like it's the gospel. And I'm like, have you guys bothered to do any research about why it is that they're doing what they're doing and how it is that they're actually doing these things and how few they're actually separating from, any, from anyone because they're still talking about right now we have 12,000 undocumented minors in custody. Over 10,000 of them were already unaccompanied minors to begin with, and half of that number has been here since Barack Obama was president. Those are still no, but Trump, but Trump, I just but I, Trump, and then they're like, "Well, I didn't like it when Barack Obama was doing it either." That's funny. I didn't see you all over Facebook screaming and yelling like you are about this when Barack Obama was doing it because nobody knew Barack Obama was doing it. Hell, I followed news stories twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Because back then I was doing even more radio than I am now, and even I didn't know half the crap that's coming out about this administration because we weren't allowed to know because the media covered all of it up. This is why the media is beside themselves to get Trump out of office because the one thing that he has done, 
whether you like it or not, is he has continued to put spotlights on everything that is screwed up in this country. He has shown us how ineffectual Congress is. He has shown us how messed up our immigration system is. He showed us how screwed up our economy is. He's, he's basically showing us how, how little of the actual America that we grew up in and we idealized has actually left. And because he's doing that, he's the fascist. He's the Nazi. He's not. He's not. He's done more to restore checks and balances to this country than any president since Ronald Reagan. And he's nobody's even talking about the things that he has changed. The power that he has given up and removed from the executive branch because he knows it's not supposed to be there. This guy is supposedly not even smart enough to tie his own shoes, but he understands more about what the executive branch is actually supposed to do than half the people that have been in the office. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> you say, Ugh, that's exactly how I feel because you're right. I I'm sitting here watching what is going on and everything he does just exposes something else. And then <sighs> we get into the whole, then you got the left and the, you want to call them the Re resistance conservatives, I guess you call them. I, I haven't seen them say much conservatively, but they, they all scream and yell. Well, they all scream and yell because they <laughs> like the system the way it is. They don't like the Constitution. They don't like the government. They don't want the government to work the way it's supposed to work because they're worried about all their special interests. They don't want somebody that's going to expose this. They don't want somebody that's going to, to wake America up. And if there's one thing Trump has done, he's woken America up. You know, I mean, in some days it doesn't seem for the better, but I do think it's for the better. Now, the, the, the hardcore pro-Trumpers, they're a problem too. Because... They look at everything he says and everything he does as gospel and godlike. And I don't think he even likes that, to be honest with you. I mean, he likes to have the support, but he's got to, every once in a while, he's got to sit back and look at some of these super just crazy pro-Trumpers and go, look, I fucked that up. What are you doing? <laughs> he has to. He ha I know he has to, but he can't say anything. He's not a dumb man. No, I mean, he's know? really not. I mean, and, but he's one of these, he, and he, he reminds me a lot of my grandfather. My grandfather was a really, really smart man. But when you get to be like 65, 70, 75 years old, you just stop giving a crap what anybody thinks when you open your mouth. Because he's like, I have outlived most of my friends, and I'm still here. So I'm old enough to tell you what I think, and if you don't like it, you can go to, you can go away. And that's basically what my granddad started doing up until... I mean, my granddad lived to be... We're not sure, because his birth, he was born old enough that his birth certificate was a guess, because back then, nobody had kids in hospitals. They had them at home, and then the census takers would come out. So my granddad was either 94 or 95 years old when he died. My granddad spent the last... 20 years of his life before the last three years when he was pretty much senile and barely paying attention to anything anymore basically telling everybody you can kiss my ass if you don't like what i have to say that's donald trump he's like dude i'm 70 some odd years old i have been here for a long time i have built businesses i have watched them fall i've picked myself up and i've done it again if you don't like what i have to say that's great but you're still gonna listen to me and, that, and that's one of the things when he was talking to the press and he was like, the one thing that I really, really liked about North Korea was when Kim spoke, his people stood at attention. I want the American people to do that when I speak. And they took it and they twisted it when all he's really saying, and they know this, they, they and that's the thing. All of these people that are slamming him right now, they have known him for years. They have been best friends with him. They have come to, they have had dinners with him. They, they have had the, him on their shows to bol to bolster their shows when they were just starting out and they were, they were doing things or they had products they wanted to push. They pushed them to him. So these people that are now coming at him from every single angle all know who he is at the core. And they're doing it not because of the type of person that he is, but because they know the type of people, because he knows the type of people that they are. 
That's part of the problem. You've seen what's ha- you've seen what's been going on with the media and with Hollywood. If you think what's happened with Lester Holt was a one- was like this this one off, you're nuts. That I mean, Lester Holt was actually mentioned in Hillary's emails. So you can't tell me that they don't know exactly how screwed up most of the media is and exactly how screwed up most of Hollywood is. The problem is Donald Trump knows because he's been running in those circles for years and he knows this is why they turned on him because he knows where all the skeletons are. And that's why he's been telling them for a long time, you guys have been doing this for forever and nobody's noticed it. And I'm going to start pointing it out till they do start seeing it. And what's worse is even if it wasn't true when he started saying it, they have made it true now because the dude could literally cure cancer and people would be protesting in the street for their right to die of, of, die of cancer. That's the scariest yeah. thing. He could literally cure cancer tomorrow and be, you know, as president of the United States, I have commissioned a team in secret for the last 24 months. We found the cure to cancer. There would be Democrats protesting in the streets for people's right to die of cancer. Because it just, whatever happens, it, it's not good because it came from Trump. Because their coronated one, their crowned one, their moment for Hillary Rodham Clinton to finally become the president of the United States was taken away from them by a man with orange hair and cheeto yud skin and they don't like it yeah, yeah i mean they they sit there for a week and a half and they scream about children being ripped from their parents and this and that and the other thing and something needs to be done about it and they're attacking they were attacking republicans in the senate and congress who were trying to put forth bills to get this to stop happening and telling them that they they're they're not doing anything and they were doing something and they just keep going on the attack and on the attack and on the attack and then they put forth a bill in the senate and the democrats shoot it down and trump goes all right fine fine i'm going to sign this executive order that stops all this right now and it didn't take 15 minutes before there were Democratic senators enough. posting stuff on social media going, yeah, but you're just going to lock up families together now. It isn't about to them. It isn't. They don't care about the kids. They don't care about the kids. No, it's all about open they borders. Want they want these people coming in the country. Yeah, I mean, they they're... want them here. Yeah, I mean, they're literally not even hiding it anymore. They're all about open borders. The Democratic answer to all of this was a bill that they put forth that basically did it, it didn't even go far enough to mention the fact of, you know, illegal aliens or illegal immigrants or undocumented immigrants or anything of the sort. So if that bill had been passed, it would have effectively made it impossible for any federal agent to stop anyone from breaking any law anywhere that, anywhere within the country. So it would have effectively rendered the FBI, DOJ, may not be a bad idea, and ICE completely moot. And if you don't think that these people are about open borders, I want to remind you that there was a certain someone who was heckled out of a Mexican food restaurant not too long ago, and part of the tape, and I wish I had the audio, but I haven't been able to find it for myself, um, but I've heard it on other shows. I just can't find a clean source for it. At the end of the tape, as she's being as she's being ushered out of the the building by her security force, they're 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 screaming, "Abolish ICE! Abolish ICE! Abolish ICE!" This isn't about immigration anymore. This isn't about people coming to America to get a better life. This is about people wanting America torn apart from the inside out. And if you don't believe me, I want to remind you again of all the cities that were on fire repeatedly under Barack Obama because of racial tensions. We haven't seen anything like that since the 60s. So now we have we had a revamp of the 60s uh, race riots going on pretty much annually. There was at least one city on fire somewhere every year that Barack Obama was president. Now we have open borders to the point where we're having to crack down to make people understand that we can't afford to take on everybody that wants to come here that isn't co- – I mean, and the problem is half of these people that are coming here, they're being coached on what to say when they get here. It's not that they're actually looking for asylum. They're looking for somewhere to come to make money to send it home. So they're pulling money out of our economy to send it back to another country that's broke. And that's why the countries that are that are, have people coming here, they have special interest groups that are telling everybody, this is what you say when you get here. These are the services that you can apply for until you find a job. This is how you can make sure that you get medical, medical care. These are all the things 
that you can do because America is this great place. And then when you get on your feet, you send as much money as you can back to your family. And then and that's what they do. I mean, I, I've seen it firsthand when I worked security. There were there were a couple of different apartment complexes and trailer lots that I did security for. And there were people that I would go up and knock on doors for noise complaints. And there were 15, 16, 17, 18 people living in the same three-bedroom trailer. Because they would, they would all cram into one place so they could share bills because every single one of them was sending three quarters of whatever they made from whatever day labor they could find or whatever else there was back across whatever border they came from to take care of their family and put it back into their, their country's economy. Money that that country isn't even having to, to do anything to generate. They're, 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 we're, we're farming out income from here and sending it to other places. Yeah. And what what good does that do us? I mean, and then it it always comes down to the liberals. It's like, oh, but these poor people, these poor people and their poor families. When when is it that you even slightly put your own country and your own interests first? When is it? When do you do that? Second Tuesday of next week. No, uh, yeah. I don't even think that. Never. Well, there is no second yeah. Tuesday of next week, so it's basically... Never. I know. I know. <laughs> but I, I don't think they'd even... If there was, I don't think they'd even... I, it, it boggles my mind that they're, they're literally... They want to give away everything that we have. They just want to give it away. Well, that's because... I mean, it, it, that's because they it, don't think it we just, should have it in the first place. You've got, you've got this, this idiot... Hmm. Wish I could come up with his name off the top of my head right now. Sam Levine, who goes and spends all of his time. He's a teacher. He's a teacher. He's a tech teacher at multiple schools, including um, NYU. And he spends all of his time trolling LinkedIn and finds the profiles of almost 1,600 ICE and immigration officers and he posts them for doxing on social media. Them, they, he's putting their them and their families in danger. Americans. Americans that are just trying to do a job. He grabs all of their personal information. He puts, together, puts it together in a a medium post which got taken down, then it ends up on Reddit, then it ends up on Twitter and Facebook. And then you end up with a bunch of Twitter accounts coming up, and the whole soul the, the, the whole goal of these Twitter accounts is to every post is a is another dox of an ICE agent. Yeah, this is the world we live in now. So um right. We, we've been on this a lot. We've uh, basically blown completely through the break, so there's no point in taking one now. But I, I did want to bring up something else that I just saw come across my feed a little bit ago, and it actually came back up again, which is kind of what reminded me that I wanted to talk about it. <clears throat> Rhode Island, you know, that bastion of conservatism, just passed. Yes, a- Rhode Island. Rhode yeah. Island. Yeah, they just. Laura's passed- from Rhode Island. She grew up there, lived there her whole, her whole life till about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Yeah, I spent a um, couple of years in. Uh, well, I spent a couple of years in Delaware, which isn't too far from Rhode Island, but not actually, not actually Rhode Island. But they just passed a bill to ensure that Trump will be off the ballot for 2020 if he doesn't release his tax returns. Nice. Like he had a shot at carrying Rhode Island anyway. I'm just saying. right. Like it matters. But here's that would be like that. Would, I mean, California could do that too. It really wouldn't matter. But here's the thing. First of all, I know I, I know it's common practice. It's kind of like that whole, you know, up until somebody decided that they were not going to do it, there was like this there there was this common law practice of a president only serving two terms because they followed the example of George Washington. Until somebody decided that hey, there's no law that says that I have to do that, and then they ran for a third term, and everybody's like, yeah, we're not doing this again, so we need a constitutional amendment. So there's no law that specifically says that a president has to release his tax returns. The interesting thing about this, and let this sink in, the IRS was completely weaponized by Barack Obama. 
do you really think if there was anything bad in Donald Trump's tax returns, we wouldn't, the whole world wouldn't know by now? Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, let's be real. If there was anything at all that was untoward in that man's tax returns, it would have been plastered everywhere. The dude can't take a leak without and zip his fly up wrong and have somebody not talk about it. Oh my god, he zipped his fly up with his left right hand and not his left hand. The dude, uh, dude's a moron. I mean, that's how bad it is. It doesn't matter what it is, how he does it, who he's with, it's all terrible. So, I mean, if there was anything that was bad on his tax returns, the whole world would know by now. I'm just saying. And as much, yeah. as, as, much as I like that common practice of presidents, you know, releasing their their tax returns because I think it's a good idea for the person that's supposed to be the leader of the free world to actually show proof that they actually have an inkling of what to do with money. We already know Donald Trump knows what to do and what not to do with money because he's gone bankrupt multiple times and built himself back up into a millionaire multiple times. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not like you can't look at his business track record, like it or lump it. The dude's still got a bigger checkbook than I'm ever going to see. Just saying. Oh, and he always has, even through his bankruptcies. I mean, it, it they 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 make it sound like these are overall bankruptcies too. Yeah, I mean, no, you you start multiple businesses, you have multiple businesses. It happens all over the place. There's plenty of corporations that own multiple businesses. A business isn't doing well. That business goes bankrupt. It doesn't mean the corporation goes bankrupt that's just the way it works well that's just that i mean just proves that nobody really understands how business works anymore and, and that's the saddest part because part of what honestly because i'm i'm gonna be completely honest i was always enamored with reagan but i it, when i was younger i really was more of like the kind-hearted soft-hearted the will do to wanted to take care of everybody and then i wound up this wasn't even intentional after everything that I had been through, I started. Uh, I, I went back to work after I could get around well enough to do it again. I started working fast food because it was the only thing that I thought I could do. And then I had a friend who, you know, said, "Hey, you've got all kinds of experience doing this kind of stuff. Why aren't you doing private security?" And I'm like, "Well, I don't get around nearly as well as I used to, and I wasn't sure they'd hire me." They're like, "Dude, they hire like 70 year old men who can't walk that weigh 300 pounds. I'm sure you've got a shot." So I got into security again, and you know, doing like actual standing security on properties and stuff and then i got into with some friends that were building a business trying to do the same thing and then the next thing i know their business had gone under and two of the clients were coming to me going look we really need somebody here can you get this stuff put together so i i it fell in my lap i, I ran a business from that day for almost 20 years and that was what really started making me understand the difference between small government conservative and big hearted want to make the government take care of everybody liberal was when I started running a business and I realized how many different regulations and everything that I had to deal with on a daily basis, not only at the local level, the state level, the federal level, the different taxes I had to deal with, the different paperwork I had to file, the fact that if I made a $3,000 mistake in the field, which I did once, by the way, doing an emergency property coverage for somebody, they basically, they cut me the check at the end of the week. I'm out there doing the math, handing them the invoices, get the check back, get it home, go back and look and realize that when I did up their invoice, I made a $3,000 mistake for that week. So guess who didn't get to eat for that week? Not the people that I paid to be there, me, because I lost every dime I was going to make on that job. So you, you learn really quick how things work when you're the boss and how screwed up everything is really when you're the boss. And that, it, it, it's just, it's just the truth. And that's when I, when I, t when I talk to people that have done nothing, but, you know, spent all their life in government jobs or teaching jobs or professorships or whatever the case may be, I keep looking at them. I said, you haven't really experienced anything out of academia or out of the middle of your liberal bubble. So you don't really understand how things work. Well, you're just a conservative a-hole. Well, maybe I am. But you don't understand how the world works because you haven't been anywhere where you've had to figure things out on your own. That's part of the problem. We don't have that anymore. We don't have the wherewithal. Where we, that's like I have conversations with people all the time. They're like, well, the, the American dream is not what it used to be. The American dream has never changed. Our ability to go after it seems to have changed because we used to have the drive. If there was something that we wanted to do, we would go out of our way to get it done. That's like people look at me like I'm crazy because I've been chipping away at the same boulder for 10 years. 
doing this radio stuff and all these other things that I'm doing. I've been doing this for 10 years. There are years I got absolutely nothing to show for it. There are years that I've made bank. But I'm still doing it because it's not just about that. It's about me wanting to build something. That's the problem. We've lost drive in this country. We don't have it anymore. All we want is for the government to be there with their hand, with our hand out and say, please, sir, may I have some more? Everybody that I talk to, that's what I hear. They don't want to work. They don't want to work their tail end off. They don't want to make things better. They just want to be able to keep up with the Joneses, watch their Netflix, eat their Pringles, and have the government hand them whatever the hell they want. And the problem with that is that is becoming the truth because if you're below the age of 35, you think the government should take care of you for everything. If you're above the age of 35, most of us think the government is insane. I'm telling you, we're right. You guys are wrong, and I'm hoping I'm dead before you guys figure out that I was telling you the truth. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like, look at, I mean, I, I have huge amounts of respect for my boss. When I came to work for him, just a couple of years before I came to work for him, he had a good job, and he, he had, well, I say a good job. He had a job that was paying him well, but they weren't doing things the way he felt they should be done. And he took a risk. And he went out and he started his own thing. And at first it was just him. And then it was him and his brother-in-law. And when I came into it, there were literally four or five of us. This was about 13, 14 years ago. And, I mean, he took a risk. You know, he left a, a, a real good-paying job started his own thing when he was almost 50 years old. And now he has five offices in four states and about 45 employees and business is booming. But he worked his butt off for that. You know, he's the kind of person that people would look at now and go, Oh, look at you, all privileged with your money and everything else. He paid himself scraps for a few years and busted his hump, working 70 hours a week. And now, yes, he's reaping the benefits. He's close to being able to basically retire, and still I don't think he will. But, you know, he's not working 70 hours a week anymore. And he's he's sitting back because he can't because he built something and he worked hard to build it. And he was smart enough to take on a partner about th three or four years ago and build it even more. And I have huge amounts of respect for him because he took that risk late. I mean, almost 50 years old. And people don't understand that. And he's the kind of guy that people would look at now that these, these, uh, I don't even know what to call them. Lazy shits is what I'll call them. will sit back and go, oh, look at you with your privilege and your money. What do you have? Why, why should you be able to say anything about anybody else or what anybody else does? He worked his ass off. To get where he is. He is going to retire a wealthy man. But he wasn't wealthy 14 years ago when he was almost 50. And he had busted his butt his whole life. And he busted his butt even harder because he decided to do something he really believed in. And he did it. And he's built a hell of a company. In 14 years. That's pretty good. You know, in 14 years to be... To go from a little Charlotte, North Carolina company to be in four states with five offices running a total of, I don't know, you know, 30 vans on the road doing installs and service on equipment. Doing pretty damn good. And I have a lot of respect for that. And when I watch people these days, and I mean, I can think of some examples off the top of my head that they just... They feel like they shouldn't have to do anything. That everything should be handed to them. And I just, it, it depresses me to see it. 
it really does. I mean, it's, you know. It used to depress me. Now it just pisses me off. All right, so yeah. uh, we're down to about five minutes before we get back around to the top of the hour, so I figure we might as well do some Hollywood hot takes real quick. There's actually been some doozies today, so we might as well have some fun. So Michael Moore puts out uh, puts out a tweet today, and I shit you not, I uh, people cannot be quote-unquote illegal on stolen land. Mr. Moore, if you consider your land stolen, I'll be there next Tuesday with a moving truck because I'm part native. I'll turn that house into a casino. Just saying. Um, then we have Tom Arnold, who actually stepped in it all over the place today, saying that he and the former attorney for Trump were going to take Trump down. Uh, Trump's attorney said, what the hell are you talking about? Tom Arnold doubled down and said it's really true, and then he went on a cocaine-fueled ramp on MSNBC. Um, or he was drunk. I'm, I'm betting cocaine. Just saying. Um, and then there was, oh, Joss Whedon's back in the news again. Uh, Joss Whedon was actually just quoted on Twitter as to saying that uh, Laura Ingram is Ann Coulter's shittier uh, prequel. Um, yeah, Joss Whedon, everybody. First of all, not a big Laura Ingram fan. Really don't much care for Ann Coulter either, but that's an asshole thing to do. Just saying. Yeah, it is. I, I'm, I actually at one time was a Laura Ingram fan. Um, that ended a couple years ago. But she doesn't. Neither one of them. I mean, leave, uh, just leave people alone. I mean, the the way people, you know, even Ann Coulter don't like her. But I won't say anything really bad about her. She's 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 an incredibly smart woman. Um, she's been destroyed over the last couple of years, and in some ways, maybe rightfully so, but. Just the personal attacks. I mean, and, and it comes from both sides, but the personal attacks from the left, if they really think this is going to win people over, then I, I, I really question their intelligence. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the the weird thing is it's like the crazies came out on all sides during this election. And unfortunately, you know, which always happens, by the way, we're acting like this election was different than normal in that respect. But the crazies always come out every election. The difference is they used to have the common sense to go away after the election was over. They just don't anymore. We have, we have everybody letting whatever their perspective freak flag fly is and it's just it's all out there for everybody to see we got the socialists that want everybody to come into the country so they can tear it apart from the inside out we got the alt-right and the alt-left which the funny thing about that is what's the alternate to 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 right that would be left so when they're calling themselves all right aren't they really just saying that they're part of the left which would explain why they're nazis <laughs> yeah I, I i'd never really understand i mean they're they i, I Right is right. Left is left. I don't understand the alt. I don't. Um, and, and you know, just like I don't understand the the term Antifa, which they call themselves anti-fascists, and they're the most fascist people you can come across. Well, that's, All they want to do is stifle speech. Well, that's nothing but rebranding. That I mean, that's the same thing the Democrats have done for years. I mean, that's why if, if you really start trying to talk to people about what's gone, gone on through history and show them, you know, the party that was for Manifest Destiny and relocating the Indians, that was the precursor to the Democratic Party. The party that was for slavery, that was the Democratic Party. The party that was for abortion, which was actually an idea perpetuated by somebody that actually gave her first speech at a women for the KKK rally. That's the Democrats. You know what happens when you when you line it up just like that? Because it happened to me the other day. Somebody comes onto your timeline and says, yeah, but the thing that you forget is the Democrats of today are actually the Republicans now because the party switched. The party switched in 1960, blah, 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 when, when civil rights got passed. I said, how do you figure when the Republicans were the ones that actually helped him helped Lyndon Bage Johnson, one of the most closeted racist presidents in history, by the way, uh, passed the Civil Rights Act. Well, what happened was the Democrats of the day were so mad that he passed it that basically they all 
became Republicans. And that's why, if you notice, before in the 60s, all the Democrats were in the South, and now it's all Republicans in the South, because really what happened is everybody changed places. You're full of shit. Sit down and shut up. Yeah, it's... Everybody... See, that uh, everybody in the 50s and the 60s, whether Republican or Democrat, were much more conservative than they are now. The whole thing is that that the country just kept becoming less and less conservative. That's my take on it. I mean, I mean, really look at things. I mean, look at things in the 50s. I don't care whether you were a Republican or a Democrat or what you were. You were still basically a conservative. The 50s were just conservative. The 40s, 30s. I mean, there were liberal programs, but, you know, I, I, 60s were a big turning point in general. Yeah, the funny thing is now we're the counterculture, <laughs> and we're the ones that yeah. are like, uh, what happened? Because now, and, and, now we're the hippies. And it's moving. I think it's starting to really move in the other direction because you get more and more people waking up and going, wait a minute. Look how much of my paycheck is gone. Yeah. You what, know? Who is this person called Fikin? How do they just take 30% of my check? Um, right. Right. <laughs> I, oh, I, I, I did, remember before the, we get off. I did. I did want to touch on something you touched on earlier. Okay. And I, I meant to bring it in a couple times. Um, when you mentioned that during the Obama administration, that seemed like every year, every six months, every few months, there was a city burning. Do you notice that it ended pretty much? I mean, other than you know, like Berkeley, you know, protesting because. A conservative was going to speak there, but when it come came to race or anything like that, you notice how that pretty much all ended with the Obama administration. Oh yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, except for the big riot, like the few days after Trump won the election, and everybody was like, oh, "Yeah, my but God, we've been robbed." But yeah, I mean, there's not there's not a city on fire every six months like there was. Uh, I mean, except well, because for, except of, the because of riots from sporting you know a, a thug getting shot by a cop or something. Yeah. You notice, I mean, do you think people aren't getting shot by cops anymore? No, I just saw a story about it again the other day. Uh, there was a, and, and it seems like from what I read about it, it was a pretty terrible story. There was a seven, 16, 17-year-old kid who was shot by a rookie cop, who happened, and apparently the kid was unarmed. But And there was a protest about it. The protesters are still being stupid because they were, like, blocking bridges and blocking overpasses and all these things. And I'm like, you guys really need to not do that because... Really, if the police wanted to, they could come in and arrest every single one of you for impeding flow of traffic. Sorry, I used to do it for a living. I know how that stuff works. Um, right, but now that now that Obama's not in office, the media doesn't care about it. Well, yeah, because it's not sexy anymore. Because they don't have a president. Right. They don't have a president talking about it twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, ginning it up. That that's why. I mean, so basically, Black Lives Matter has almost gone away. I haven't heard the name D. Ray McCassin in a year. Who? Just kidding. Yeah, exactly. So uh, on the way out, I made the mistake of pulling up this meme because I thought it would be funny. And as you know, being a traitor to your country is really easy for the fondest siblings. And it has side by side pictures of Jane, you know, in uh, hanging out with the NVA. And then it has a picture of Henry Fonda. Henry Fonda looks like Jack Nicholson with bad plastic surgery. Doesn't he really? It's kind of terrible. <laughs> I, it's funny. I, I like. I saw. When when the whole thing went down with him, I saw a picture, kind of, I was scrolling news or whatever, and I saw a picture, and I was like, is that Jack Nicholson? I was like, oh, no. That's that's Peter Fonda. What did he do? And I, that's when I started reading. I was like, oh, huh. he jumped yeah. on that bandwagon, has he? Yeah. I mean, he literally looks like a cracked out Jack Nicholson with bad plastic surgery. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. All right, so on that note, well, well, I would say why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you, but they can really only do that on Facebook now. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I I hop on that show account every once in a while for our show. Don't tell them that. They will come find you and get that suspended. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on Facebook. At, I'm, I'm Daniel Wright. Just search for me. My picture's on there. 
All you that know me from Twitter know what I look like. And you can follow along with me at Radio Host Rick on Twitter. Uh, search Rick Robinson on Facebook. Um, and actually, you can find me on Instagram as Rick Robinson as well. I've uh, been talking that up a bit. Still not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet because it mainly involves pictures and nobody wants to see this face. But I'll find some way to get creative with it. Um, and it's pretty easy to find me now because thanks to Michael giving me a nickname, I actually kind of have cross-branding going on. Everything mentions Kung Fu Rick somewhere, so just search for that. You'll find it. If you have to ask, it means you haven't listened to the Loftus Party podcast yet. What you need to go do. By the way, we just dropped another video that I put together for Michael over the week. Uh, in my, uh, The first one was good. In my opinion, this one's even better because it, it, it talked about history and it wasn't about Trump, so everybody got into it and relaxed a little bit more. And the laughter was less tense so it was a really good segment so you guys should go check that out and i have another one i'm working on but he won't let me release it because he's I, I have like like these four or five minute clip that is all the best things that he said about marriage during the le- latest stand-up bit that he did and he's like everybody puts that stuff out i don't want to be the guy that does that and i'm like dude but they were laughing their asses off i was like screw it i'm putting it together anyway i will show it to you and if you don't want to run it it can stay in the vault and he's like fine so I'm hoping when I finish putting the final touches on it over the next few days that he'll decide to go ahead and put it out. But if not, you can actually find the whole video somewhere, I think. Actually, I don't think he's published the whole video yet. I will probably work on that next because it's honestly like an hour of just really good stuff. So at some point, I'll probably clean it up and see if he wants to just put out the whole thing once he's done. He's, he's an incredibly intelligent and funny dude. He really is. I mean, it it took me a while to get used to him, but now that I've gotten to know him pretty well, he's he's just he's really quick witted. He's he's quick on his feet. It's fun watching him on Fox News, especially there was a bit that he did a couple of weeks ago where he was standing and uh, standing against another comic who was talking about Donald Trump and everything else. And Michael kept hitting point after point after point, and all the other guy would say, and it was funny because the dude had the best laugh I think I've ever heard. All he would do was give out his deep-throated laugh and then go, yeah, but Michael, he tweets. And Michael's like, and? (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, on that note, we didn't take a break and we're long, and it's been a really long week for me. I'm going to go to bed now. So we will see you guys next week. I I will be back with you uh, Monday, actually. You should hear some of the work I do Monday before I even get back on the air because we'll be putting together the Loftus Potty Podcast, the uh, Loftus Party Podcast over the weekend. So that should drop again on Monday. Um, and I will see you guys Monday night on Off the Rails. And on that note, we are out for the night. I ain't even playing a bumper. We're just going to go away. So we'll see you guys. Take care. God bless. Bye. <laughs>